Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Rejoicing that will be. When we all some, I think, introductory thoughts as we go into what song leading and leading the song service uh, is. I think firstly we must understand that song leading is an important aspect of our worship service. It's no less important than any of the other functions because often a song leader and the person that's going to direct our minds in worship He's the person that's going to set the tone for the entire worship service. It's active throughout the worship service. He's up and down in between the Lord's Supper, in between the sermon, um, Bible readings. Song leaders often have to make adjustments to the order of service. If someone's not available, they've got to make a quick call. And they've got to, like we've all said before, they've got to know the audience they need to know who's there in that audience if someone needs to say a prayer if someone needs to do a scripture reading they've often got to make a judgment call to say so and so can you please lead a prayer or so on so it's a really important aspect in that sense as well we spend a lot of time singing together in the worship service as well most of our time is spent here aside from us all listening to the sermon so we need to make sure that we get this right and we take it seriously. A song leader must lead singing well for the church to sing well. I've never been to a congregation where there isn't good song leading to get good singing out of a congregation. That we must understand as well. If we were to just come here on a Sunday morning and there was no dedicated song leader, and we were going to decide, okay, well, how should we go about our song service this morning? I think you can see some issues that would come up in that discussion, right? Because one person, I mean, we need to decide how many songs to sing. One person might say, let's sing 10 songs. You know, he likes singing. He wants to sing 10. Another person, not so much. Let's sing three. Well, which songs should we sing? Should we sing slow songs, fast songs? Someone needs to take control of this function so that we can do things decently and orderly, like the Bible says we ought to do it. One of the first things I think, biblically, from the principles that we can see here, we need to do things from a point of understanding. When we turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, We read in verse 15. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. We must understand what we are singing. And this is vitally important for a song leader, and we'll see this in our preparation. A song leader must understand the songs that we are going to sing on a Sunday morning. Now, a lot of the songs in our congregations are sung in, I want to say Old English, almost King James type Old English. And there are words there that we don't understand because we don't use them anymore. Not even some of the older brethren that sung those. I don't even think they know them. How much less are the younger people going to know what they're singing about? And so it's vitally important that as we go through our songs that we select, and we'll see this in the preparation section, we need to go through the songs that we select, meditate on them, make sure that we understand them. And if there is a difficult passage to understand, explain that to the congregation, because we must understand what we are singing and what we are doing in our song service. The other point I want to make is the principle of edification. Look at verse 26 of chapter 14. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 26. How is it then, brethren? 
When you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. So we need to build one another up. Turn with me to Colossians 3.16 as well. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. We need to admonish one another when we sing. And this is, when we think about building up the congregation through song leading, the song leader needs to have a certain level of competence. Song leading is not for everyone. Often we think if we can sing Whitney Houston in the shower, you know, we are qualified to get up here and sing and lead singing. That is simply not the case. We need a certain level of technical musical ability. We need to be able to sing and we need to be able to hold rhythm, tempo, so that we can lead the congregation to sing well. I think we need to, we forget sometimes that in all that we do, we need to strive for excellence. It's simply not good enough to rock up here on a Sunday morning and then jot down a few songs that I think might work with no preparation, no thought. That's, that's just not going to cut it. That's not what God expects from us. We've spoken briefly about the principle of order number three. Everything should be done in order. And yeah, I'm not referring necessarily to the order of worship. But... We're not going to put on a performance in the front. We're not here as a song leader in front to entertain. Someone said to me once, I'm not going to mention which congregation, but he said, you know, I enjoyed the singing so much, I just sat and listened. It's got the wrong idea then. we all singing, encouraging one another. we all participating. No one's there to put on a show to make themselves look good. We're giving all glory to God when we do this. At the same time, though, order does not mean stiff or lifeless. Because I think a lot of times we, we've been so fearful of being you know, labeled as happy clappy or Pentecostal or whatever, that we've also become very stiff in some congregations. And that's also what we want to avoid. Then there's the principle of spirituality. When we look at Ephesians 5, 18 to 19, another one of the popular singing uh, verses that we all know well, the command there is actually to be filled with the Spirit. The command there is not to sing. Being filled with the Spirit is what leads us to the singing. Now, we sometimes forget about the spiritual dimension of the song leading, and often we focus on preparing the technical can we sing the song, the music, the notes, and all of that? That's good. But we need to make sure that we are spiritually prepared. The same as with preaching a sermon, the same as with teaching a Bible study, preparing for song leading. And if you haven't done this, I challenge you to prepare song leading and your songs beginning with prayer. It makes such a difference. Meditate on that song. Read through the words. I'm not sure if you've ever noticed when you read through a song without the melody and the music, you get a different picture from that song. You understand some of the emotions by the words that are used in that song. So go through every song, read through it, make sure you know the words, the meaning of the words. I challenge you to do that if you've not done so. A lot of the songs in our songbooks are also simply psalms. From the book of Psalms. And someone's put a melody to them. You know. Do you, do you know that? Like go and go back and read the psalm. Read the scripture. In some of our newer song books. There's actually the scripture that the song is associated with. Go back and read that scripture. To understand what was the songwriter actually intending for us to get out of that song. I think that's important. So that we can get that across to the congregation as well. And this involves a, a level of emotional intelligence, right? Because if we are going to sing with understanding, sing in the spirit, we must understand where the congregation is at different points in time, right? 
Oftentimes we have various you know, emotions that the congregation goes through. Sometimes it's a, it's a very sad service where you know, there's been a passing or something. That next Sunday morning is often a very sad, mournful occasion. You know, an appropriate song there is not going to be sing and be happy, for instance. You know, a comf songs of comfort, songs of you know, being close to God. That's what you're probably looking for in an occasion like that. And I think we must be wary of that. And then we mustn't be afraid of emotion. And I think oftentimes we've been led to avoid emotion. But God has emotion. And we are made in the image of God. And the fruits of the Spirit is what? Love. Joy. And so we need to be directed in the Spirit to those emotions. And I believe that that's actually highly effective in our song leading. So let's not avoid the emotion, but use it correctly. When you read through the Psalms that David wrote, you can see the emotion in what he's writing there. Those were not lifeless pieces that he just wrote there. You can see his passion, his hurt, the feelings that he's thinking, his deep thoughts that he's thinking. That comes through in the text. And that can come through in the singing that we have as well. I don't say emotionless worship is just as bad as emotionalism. So we need to find ourselves in the middle of the spectrum. So we're not going to go all emotional for the sake of I'm performing and I'm putting on an act now and, I, you know, I, and I'm just doing things for the sake of being emotional. But I'm also not just going to sit and like not have any, emotional, any emotion at all. Because I believe that's also wrong. I, I firmly believe that all of our congregations should be able to sing like that. There's no reason why we shouldn't be able to sing like that. And one of the things I was going to say later on is that congregational singing in that way takes time and it takes effort. And it takes practice. And I think that's often where we fall short these days. I know in the past there used to be lots of sessions on singing and practicing singing. And even song leading training. Because you don't just pick this up. So someone doesn't just have a natural ability. You've got to be trained. And so that's one of the things we need to focus on going forward. Just in terms of preparing to lead singing. I mentioned this a bit earlier. Begin and end with prayer. It's important. Pray about which songs you select. Number two. Have consideration for older and younger people. Brethren, you have to know the audience. You can't sing songs from like 50, 60 years ago that the young people don't know. You have to mix it up. You have to mix up the types of songs that you sing. We can't be singing all slow songs or all fast songs. Vary the type of songs that you sing and make it appropriate to the occasion. And be mindful of specialized songs. So sing songs that are meant for the Lord's Supper. I mean, that makes sense. That's why those songs were written. They are invitation songs that are meant for the invitation. When the preacher has extended his invitation, use an invitation song. They were written for that purpose. Now, I don't know if all of you know, but all of our songbooks have a topical index. So if you want to sing a song of praise, you can go and look up a song of praise. And just best practice, use a song of praise or worship when you start. And use familiar songs when you start as well. I think often we get caught up in songs that we like and songs that sound nice. But use familiar songs to get the congregation going. So as a song leader, you will also gauge what you've got to work with on that day. Because I've also been in situations where you try and lead a song and no one is going with you. Have you been, the, I don't know who's led singing a lot. But you can be in a situation where you try and lead a song and no one is following. <laughs> so use a very familiar song as you get going so that you can also gauge your level of participation know the meaning of songs we've gone through this read over meditate on songs so that you know them word for word 
Know the order of service as well. So this is important if you are going to go to another congregation especially. Ask them what their order of service is. It might not be the same as yours. <laughs> so you might have a song, an opening prayer, another two songs, a scripture reading, another song, the Lord's Supper. Another church might not do that. <laughs> so find out what the order of service is so that it can be done orderly and decently and it can flow and you know exactly who's expected to do what when i've mentioned choosing appropriate songs <clears throat> yeah. like wilmot said for sermon preparation brethren it is important if you're going to lead singing and do it well that you practice beforehand a sunday morning is not the best time for you for it to be the first time you lead a, a, a singing service it would be advisable for you to start at a bible study or a get together at youth or something else but a sunday morning is not the time for you to kind of practice or try to learn how to song lead competent spiritual filled men should be leading singing on a sunday morning announce what will be doing or what will be happening during the service at the appropriate times later in this i've seen a lot of times where someone uh, they just announce something and then they sit down but make sure that people understand what you're doing and what you're saying and where you're going ideally before someone is going to get up and do something announce it before the next song that you sing so that if i say after the next song, 532 or whatever, brother so-and-so is going to do the scripture reading. That person can get themselves ready and not go to the bathroom or do something else. But they will know when this song is done, I need to be prepared. Just so that things can happen decently and in order. We don't want to be looking for a brother. And I've seen that. I mean, you've been in a, in a situation probably where someone is called and no one knows where they are. Okay, so we want to avoid stuff like that. Okay, so don't lead a song that you can't sing. Even though it's, it sounds nice, and I think a lot of us, you know, if you've grown up in the church, you probably learned these lessons the hard way. <laughs> you've heard other brothers sing it well, so you think you can sing it well as well. If you can't sing that song at home and get the pitch right and know all the parts, don't sing it on a Sunday morning. It will be a flop. Make sure that you can find the pitch of your song and if you can't do it, use a pitch pipe. I know there are a few, Kristen, I know uses a pitch pipe. But this is important, Braden, because if you lead the song too high, it's unsingable. People cannot participate if you start the song incorrectly. When you start the song very low, I wouldn't say it's unsingable, but it just doesn't sound nice. Right? And the basses can't sing with you then as well. So make sure you practice your pitch. And you know how to find your pitch every time. And this is where practice at home becomes very important. Keep in mind who is in the audience. And if you aren't sure, it's probably a good idea, especially if you're in a, a, a congregation that you don't know, to ask if you're going to sing a song with an alto lead and there are no altos, you can have a problem, right? So it's best to avoid that kind of situation. Now I find a lot of people make this mistake on a Sunday evening or Bible study when there when they aren't so many voices. But if you aren't sure and you know you're going to need an alto lead or a tenor lead or something like that, just check. How many altos do we have in the audience? Okay, you know if you sing this song, you're going to be fine. Or how many basses do we have if there's a bass lead, which a lot of our songs do have. So that's also important to understand. I think the, the gender like is just make sure that you're comfortable with the songs that you want to lead, right? Make sure you can sing them well, you know the pitch, and that everyone can sing along with you. Just some considerations for people that are going to lead singing. Be aware of things that hinder good singing, right? If you aren't going to be practiced and know your songs, you are not going to help anyone in the service, right? It's going to be very difficult for people to follow if you don't sing correctly. And that often happens. 
take advantage of training opportunities like this. You all are here. When we have sessions like this, be there. Encourage other people that would like to song lead. Encourage them to be there as well. And I said earlier, strive for excellence. It shouldn't be okay to just come on a Sunday morning, pick a few songs. Okay, I sing them and that's that. We should try to do the best that we can for God. That singing that we saw earlier, that takes effort, that takes practice, that is excellence. And that's what we all should strive for. Lack of order. Now, this, this comes up often where something that unexpected happens. Right? As a good song leader, you should have four or five songs in your back pocket that are familiar, that people know for if something goes wrong. Oftentimes we have a baptism. And what, what happens? The song leader needs to sing a few more songs. Right? Make sure in a case like this here, in the a, in a church here, um, where you've got a projector system, I know Eastridge also has one, have those songs ready on some PowerPoint slides that everyone knows that everyone can lead so that everyone can sing along. Because what happens then if you don't have the songs on the PowerPoint, the person stands up here with the song book, but the church doesn't know the song, so now no one can sing with, and he stands and sings a solo here. If you've got the books, it's fine. You can have the songs and have the songs ready. Everyone can sing. I've seen people, you know, if someone gets sick in the congregation, you know, suddenly, it's just good practice to have a couple of songs in your back pocket over and above the ones for the worship service. Don't use the wrong songs, brethren. Don't on a Sunday morning sing, oh, why not tonight for the invitation song. That's, that's just silly and that's not singing with understanding, right? We want to make sure that we sing with understanding and what we sing actually makes sense and it's appropriate. That's not appropriate, right? Again, there are songs that are difficult to sing. Just like there are Bible passages that are difficult to understand, some songs are difficult to execute. Some congregations can do them well. It doesn't mean that all congregations can do them well. Don't also choose too many unfamiliar songs, right? I mean, if there's a song that you haven't sung in a long time, by all means, lead that song. But don't choose because what happens often, I've noticed, at a congregation where you've got a lot of song leaders, when I now get my turn, I'm going to sing songs that we, we don't sing because nobody sings them. So I'm going to sing those songs and half the church doesn't know them. Also not appropriate. Brethren, I know a lot of us have projector systems now. If possible, and I, I think you guys do, we do here at Babel have the notes as well. Just so that people coming in, if they've got any musical ability, they can follow the notes as well. It's very difficult when you only have words on the screen to follow along. So I think it's good here, yeah, I'm not sure, but if you've got a projector system, try and make sure that they're musical notations with the, the songs as well. Um, and then practice. A congregation needs to, to practice. Um... When we talk about actually getting up and leading singing, be friendly. Often the song leader is the one that says hello, says welcome, and they're the person that gets things going. You know, if you come up here or like, uh, and you know, you've got a bad attitude and you know, your demeanor isn't right, that puts people off, right? Be warm, friendly, smile, be sincere, be prepared. Right? Things happen unexpectedly in a worship service. Be focused. Don't get distracted. Things happen in the audience. You see weird things sometimes in the audience. Right? It's not just preachers. Let me tell you, song leaders see some weird stuff as well. And hear some weird stuff as well. Be prepared. Mentally, physically, spiritually. Again, this issue of appearance. Be presentable. Don't let your appearance be a distraction something to take away from the song service, right? 
inspire confidence. When you come up and lead singing, lead the singing, right? When you sing out, you give people confidence to actually go with you and sing. When you come up and sing timidly, people follow your lead and they sing timidly as well. Right? So we want people to sing and give their all. Let them know that it sounds good as well. Okay, so, I mean, with having the projectors now, I know not everyone has the projectors, but if you are announcing the song, speak slowly, speak clearly. Ideally, give the number as in 159 and then say 159. That just helps people, right? If you need to say the name as well or, or the, the title of the song, say that. But also make sure people, so I've seen also someone just go, Okay, 159, and off they go. Give people a chance to actually get there, right? Make sure, look around. When, once you've seen most people are at the song and they've got it, then start going when people are ready, right? Move quickly from one song to the next. Don't, uh, I know that's not an issue here, but, you know, don't uh, be fiddling or dilly-dallying. The person operating the projector system needs to play play ball here yeah, as well um i said number five lead the singing right so if you've led singing at an athlon for example if you don't lead the song there are sisters there that will lead that song for you in the audience and i promise you it's not easy but if you're going to lead the song then lead the song sing with boldness you've prepared You've practiced, you know you can sing the song well. Sing it, be confident in your ability. Sing out and lead the song. If possible, I know some people can use their hand to kind of keep the rhythm. That's great if you can do that. Do that because people watch you. People can follow your rhythm. They can follow your hand. I know that's not everyone's thing. If possible, do it, use it. It works, it helps. Okay? If you are going to do spontaneous singing... Um, like I did earlier. We were just singing a song. Sing a song that everyone knows. Right? Sing a song that's easy to sing. Don't sing a song with alto part. There are no alto singers here. There are no females here. So I'm not going to sing a song with an alto lead. So be aware of your audience as well. Make sure that if you are only planning to sing the first and last stanza, tell the audience that. Okay? It can be very confusing when you sing versus... 1, 3, and 5. And people aren't expecting that. So make sure if you aren't singing all of the verses, you communicate that clearly up front. And announce the invitation song. I think it's not so prevalent when you've got a projector system, but announce it before the sermon, ideally. The last thing you want is after the sermon and you have the call to action, you have the invitation call, and now you've got to get up, find the song. People need to find the song that you announce. You want to get straight into the song so that people can respond, right? So you want to waste as little time as possible.